What's up, guys? We're coming back to you now because Penn State's gotten spring ball Monday. Excited to see it. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between inside zone and wide zone and what you can see with the new offensive coordinator, Yursic, and how it's going to be a little different from the inside zone that you Penn State fans have been so familiar with for so long. All I ask, guys, hit the subscribe button. Hit like, hit notifications on For the Bloggy, the website, fortheblogie.com, YouTube, For the Bloggy. Let's have a great day. Can't wait to talk some Penn State ball. It's been too long. Here we go. Up until this point, Penn State's been predominantly an inside zone team. I think what you're going to see this year is you're going to see a little difference. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys the difference between inside zone and wide zone. So this is a play from this year with Soraka's offense against Michigan. Now I'm going to show you the television version of this because I really like how close it is, but it really gives you a good feel of the, how the steps happen. So what's going to happen on inside zone right here is some, it's real simple. Okay, the running back is going to give himself a nice shuffle, crossover look, and he's going to get the ball, and he's going to run right down the crack of the center. So when he gets the ball, he's going to one, two, and he's going to run right down the pipe of the hash where the center was. He is reading the A-gap defender. That would be the nose guard right here. So what I'm going to look, watch, I'm going to show you what the offensive line is going to do here. Offensive line is what we call combo blocks. They're going to combo one, two to the most dangerous man. So really, you can tell this is kind of a screwed up situation. It should be these two or a guy here to what looks like number 12 coming into the pocket. It should be these two for the 43. It should be these two working to here. And he should be able to cut off whoever's, whoever's in this point right here. There was a big issue. You could tell what they were doing right here. There was a big confusion because of the 3-3 stack that Brown gave them. But you can see what they're trying to do. Watch the footwork. It's just quick one, two, foot in the ground, taking away the inside. We're trying to get as many double teams as possible. Notice there's no real movement. Um, they didn't do a very good job of getting movement on the defensive line. This was a problem that Penn State had all year. And you can kind of see what's happening right here. Watch the running back, one, two, three. He's going to put his foot in the ground, and he's going to get behind that defense, and he's going to squirt himself in for a big play. Now, inside zone, this is a great play. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to show you the good stuff. For you Penn State fans back in the Saquon Barkley days, what you're going to see is you're going to see inside zone to the right. So the running back is going to shuffle, cross over, and he's going to get right down the, the butthole of the, of the center. Okay, so take a look. Now, as he does this, okay, watch this shuffle, cross over. He's going to get right down the pipe. Now, the offensive left tackle here isn't blocking the defense bend because the quarterback is responsible for him. What I want you to see is I want you to see how they're going to make this work. He's going to push himself forward. Remember, he's in charge of the A-gap defender. The A-gap defender ends up becoming, it was number 96. Number 96 gets washed by, so he puts his foot in the ground, and he gets vertical behind it. Watch. One, two, three, puts his foot in the ground, and he gets vertical. Guys, what Saquon Barkley did with this offense was special. He is a once-in-a-generation lifetime performer. The speed, the control, the power. I mean, just watch what he did. Oh, guys, there's a reason why he's a freak of nature. And there's a reason why Penn State won games the way they won them when he was on the field. That is just unnecessarily awesome how he did it. But you see how inside zones, just an inside hitting play, it's going to have the opportunity to bend back. Okay, but I want you to see something. Watch where the running back bends back. He bends back exactly where the center was, right at the point of attack. And now you're going to watch another clip of Saquon Barkley running inside zone, this time against Purdue. You're going to get a solo here. You're going to get a combo here to here. Okay. You're going to get a combo here to here. You're going to kick this kid. Okay. Running back is going to shuffle cross over. He's going to get down the butt crack of the center. And what you're going to look for right here is you're going to watch how he's going to read the A-gap defender. Notice the A-gap defender is going to be this guy right here. A-gap defender gets pushed and comes up the field. So the running back's got to put his foot in the ground, and he's got to get behind that whole thing. Now, the difference between Saquon Barkley and every other running back in America, watch how he puts his foot in the ground. Most of them are just going to push forward and just put their head down right here and try to get three yards. Saquon decides he's going to jump cut, go outside, and outrun the entire Purdue football team. Guys, they had this thing corral. They brought a safety in late. They had eight guys in the box, and there is nothing they could do to fit this. This was absolutely a great play, but this is inside zone. I want you guys to see how it works. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of the wide zone. This is Yersik when he was at Oklahoma State, and I want you to kind of see what's happening. This play is a little bit of a wrinkle, and there's a difference. 
Normally on inside zone, the running back is going to shuffle and cross over, and he's going to aim at the butt crack of the center. Now what the running back is going to do is he's going to do what's called a rocker step. He's going to take that back foot, and he's going to rocker and turn his shoulders on a path. His path is going to be the inside foot of a ghost tight end. So if there's no tight end there, he's going to run at this point right here for five steps. He is never going to veer off of this path to go wider than he needs to go to run wide zone. The idea behind this play is not to capture the edge. It's to push it. Okay. When he hits his fifth step, he's going to read the play. I'm going to show you what he's reading, and he's going to get vertical from there. First thing he's reading is the MLS scrimmage. Can he get outside by staying on that path? If this defender pushes out, his eyes immediately go to the next down lineman. And he makes his cut on this fifth step off of this down lineman. So let's look. Okay, running, running back is going to take himself. He's going to watch, watch the rocker step right here. Notice the rocker step. Notice the shoulders turn. Notice his aiming point. His eyes were here first. That even's alignment widened with the tackle, so his eyes immediately go to the next down lineman. Next down lineman gets pushed, so on his fifth step, he puts his foot in the ground and he gets vertical. So here it is, one, two, three, four, five. And that's where it gets vertical. Now, the backside does something a little different. They just solo block this and they insert this fullback. You'll see a lot of this, but I really want you to see something really entertaining. Watch how the offensive line creates movement and flow because of the shoulders of the running back. This is not so much a downhill play as it is a horizontal to get vertical play. So watch what happens. Offensive line, they get the same combos. Okay, So again, you've got a solo block here. You two are going to work together to here. Okay, normally these two would go to here, but now they're just going to base block because he's going to read this kid as an RPO. You're going to get a lot of RPOs in this offense. So watch how the running back gets vertical. And because of that horizontal press by those three guys, you create this big open gap right here. Okay, now you're going to pit. I want you to see what's happening. This is going to be wide zone to the right. He's going to aim at the ghost foot, the ghost tight end's inside foot. He's reading this guy first, this guy second. Okay, now how they played this was a little different. They insert this little B back right here, and Penn State fans should be very happy that those little B back tight end H backs are going to be widely used in this offense. Now, watch what happens. They're going to press out to this right now. He's going to get a wash. You're going to insert this kid to the strong safety. You've got a combo to here. You've got a combo to here. Running back shoulders are turned. Remember the rules we talked about. First read, second read. So his first read tells him he's not going to go outside. His second read gets hooked. So, but he's still going to stay on his path for five. And he's going to get vertical right off of it right now. That is the path of wide zone. Remember, whatever happens is he's going to cut this thing. He's going to cut off of that center. Wherever that center ends up is where he's going to cut in this ball. Watch it get his foot in the ground, and now you see wide zone. It's a slower developing play than inside zone, but it allows for an offensive line that may not be as big and powerful as uh, maybe a most Big Ten lines are. It allows them to get vertical as much as possible. Guys, I'm excited about what Penn State's going to do. They're going to run the wide zone with RPOs. I can't wait to see what's going to happen, guys.